Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you some little sort of uh, short lessons in Sculptress. Now, uh, anybody who sort of uses ZBrush, if you haven't heard of Sculptress, it's made by the uh, same people. If you actually go to the Pixelogic website, uh, go to their products and go to Sculptress, uh, and you can sort of read up on Sculptress here, see what they can what you can do with the program. You just click on the download link and uh, whichever your operating system is and then you'll fill out your name address, uh, name and email address and they will send you a link to the um, uh, to actually download Sculptress and in fact it's 100% free. It's not a demo, it's not um, anything that you need to sort of uh, upgrade or pay any money for it is a free program uh, which is quite simply amazing when you uh, realize what the program is capable of uh, it's not quite as uh, functional as ZBrush uh, but um, I actually uh, prefer it for some functions uh, for some of the things that you can do with it uh, you cannot actually do in ZBrush and uh, the uh, main reason for this is that Sculptress uses something called dynamic tessellation. And I'll just show you what dynamic tessellation is. So I'll go to wireframe. Uh, and I'm just going to be going quickly through these lessons. So uh, you'll, you'll be able to pick it up. It's, it's a very simple in interface here, a lot simpler than ZBrush. So uh, I just clicked on the, the wireframe button and you can see that the hotkey does come up if you want to use hotkeys. Uh, I don't bother because it's just so simple and uh, I'm just going to switch on symmetry and that's fine. Normally you'll be uh, you'll have symmetry enabled anyway. Uh, so um, this is the the sphere that you start with and uh, to give you some idea of what dynamic tessellation is I'm just going to go to the uh, grab tool uh, which is uh, similar to a move tool I'm just going to hold down shift and scroll up with the mouse wheel just to increase the size. You can see that you can also do that here if you want. Uh, now, um, if you look at the wireframe here, you can see it's, it's you know, a basically a simple sphere. You can see that it uses triangles instead of quads. But uh, if I click with the uh, grab tool, you'll notice that all of that, uh, all of those triangles have um, suddenly sort of been um, chopped up and turned into smaller triangles and depending on the size of your brush uh, determines the size of the triangles that are left behind. Now if you ever find that you've, you've basically put too much detail into your uh, model you can come in here with the reduce brush and uh, you can use that to sort of try and bring down the number of triangles and the good thing about this reduce brush is that it will try to reduce the triangles while still keeping the details that you have um, sculpted into the surface. So it's going to analyze your mesh and decide which of the triangles that you need and which triangles it could possibly do without. Uh, and if you want to do that on the, o uh, on the total sort of um, model you can just say reduce selected and that will, um, that will actually uh, bring in the the whole sort of um, model and uh, and just reduce the triangles down as much as it can there. And you can see there that we've gone back down to um, about 6k triangles. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, do a new scene with the, with a, just a new sphere um, just so that we, we're starting at a similar place. So uh, what can we do with Sculptress? Well, um, I'm going to try and uh, create a sort of a, a head shape. So again, holding down shift and scrolling, uh, scrolling up with the mouse, uh, I'm just going to use the, the grab tool and I'm going to pull out sort of a chin, like a jawline here. And uh, at the back of the head, I'm just going to lift this, uh, this back up just to sort of give us a, a bit of a, a sort of more of a skull type shape to it. Uh, I'm going to hold down shift and just um, just uh, left uh, mouse button over here. That's uh, that's just sort of to smooth it. And 
I'm also going to um, grab a little bit and um, unfortunately it looks like I am slowing down a little bit because of the recording but that's alright. So just sort of getting the, the basic shapes done. Now, um, <coughs> excuse me, oh. uh, sorry I do have a little bit of a cold. Um, but uh, I'm going to have to speed this up a bit, I think. So I'm just going to um, get some, some nice sort of uh, basic geometry in here. And um, so we can put in sort of eye socket type shapes here. Uh, I didn't want that nose ridge to be, sl to be so uh, far in, so I'm just going to bring that back out. Uh, I'm going to bring out a nose sort of shape here. Uh, and you can see that uh, wherever I'm sculpting more detail, it uh, it really is coming in there and going. Oh, you need you need more triangles there. Here, let me get that for you. And so it is it is just doing that uh, without you even telling it. Oh, I need more triangles here, which is what you'd have to do in any other program, including ZBrush, in fact. Um, but uh, Sculptress is just so much nicer than um, than those programs for just sort of forgetting that you're using a program just thinking that uh, hey maybe I'll, I'll just sort of sculpt something like like I'm using clay so what I'll do is I'll try and uh, bring some of the uh, side of this nose in just so that we can sort of uh, come in behind the nostrils here and uh, losing a little bit of volume on the cheekbones, which we can just sort of bring out like that. Uh, and we've got sort of a very sort of apple cheek there, so I'll just sort of bring that down. And you can see just how plastic this this um, workflow is, how plastic this material feels, and pliant, uh, which really does make it a lot like using clay. So um, I'll just uh, come in with the inflate brush. Wow, the uh, the hot key for inflate is C. <laughs> I wouldn't have picked that, but um, no, no, I don't really sort of have to remember that. I just need to move the mouse just a couple of inches over. So um, uh, I tend to use the grab brush more than um, more than any other brush. I say brush tool. Um, Okay, so just coming in here, and I'm I'm just sort of creating like the the sort of the rough um, uh, the the rough shapes of of what I want to sort of create here, and um, again that was holding shift to smooth down there, uh, and I'm just going to bring this middle of the brow down just a little bit just to give it a little bit more expression there and bring this these sides up and I might bring these sides forward just a little bit just to give us sort of a a, a bit more of a um, a nice sort of cartoony um, outline of, of uh, bone masses and bone shapes there uh, now, what I'll do is probably um, I want to get a mouth shape uh, coming in here. I'm just going to move the bottom of this nose up just a bit. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll actually do some masking. So I just brought my um, cursor size down. I'm just going to click around just to give myself some geometry. Uh, just so that I, I know that there's there's enough there. And then I'm going to hold down control and um, drawing with control draws a mask. And um, this um, this actually uh, goes off the strength of the, uh, the brush that you're using as well as the size. And holding down control and alt, alt reverses anything that you're that you're doing. So holding down control and alt will actually uh, take away from the mask. So I'm just going to um, just create more or less just this sort of um, uh, mouth opening, just sort of a, a bit of a slit there. And um, now I might, um, if I hold down Control 
uh, if I hold down control and mouse wheel down, you'll notice that the strength up here actually reduces. And if I do that and then sort of come in with the masking, you can see that I am um, softening the edge a little bit because I'm using a slightly less strong version of the mask. And this is just so that we have a little bit of a smoother sort of gradient from uh, where it's masked and where it's unmasked. Uh, so with that done, I'm just going to hold down shift and scroll up to uh, get my uh, grab brush uh, or my grab tool cursor larger. I'm just going to off in space here, hold down control and click, and that's going to reverse my mask. Uh, a lot of these hotkeys will feel, or uh, these techniques will feel very familiar to you if you've used ZBrush. So now I'm just going to uh, pull in with my grab tool. Now it's uh, not going in um, as much as I'd like because I've still got my um, strength turned down. So I'll hold down control and scroll up just to increase that up because I like a nice sort of uh, nice strong uh, grab tool. And then if I sort of pull in and you can see that we are getting much more sort of um, uh, much better result there. I'm just going to hold down shift to do a little bit of smoothing and then continue to sort of drag in there. Now you can see it's it's looking a little rough but that's fine. Uh, I can reverse the mask and just sort of um, sorry and then holding down shift not control uh, just sort of just tap with the um, with the shift key down just to sort of do a little bit of uh, basic smoothing there and if you want to really sort of um, smooth and get sort of back to working this properly just hold down control and drag an empty space um, so that we get rid of that mask and you'll you'll find that that will um, that will make the the actual um, um, uh, the actual smoothing uh, a lot better and it will also fix up your topology as well uh, which might not necessarily happen if you uh, have a mask on it. So now that we've got that, uh, I'm just going to fix up the shape of this mouth a little bit. So I want a mouth that's a little bit sort of narrower and I want uh, this bottom part here, I want to sort of pull a lip out from this, uh, from the bottom of this mouth. So I'm just going to come in here making sure that I've got the geometry that I need. Uh, I'm just going to hold down control again and drag out a, um, a bit of a lip shape. I'm going to hold down control and alt just to sort of uh, narrow it towards the sides here. And uh, that should be fine. Uh, and you can see that this is a fairly hard edge and I'll show you what it sort of what happens when we use uh, a more of a hard edge mask. So control click and shift mouse wheel and now if we pull out the lip you can see that we get sort of m uh, a much more um, uh, stern edge there so just bringing that out like that uh, bring this up a little bit and again tapping the um, tapping with the shift button held down just to sort of give us that uh, that smoothing there. And you can see that's a fairly ugly looking lip, but if we sort of take the um, the mask off, uh, we'll have a much better sort of uh, smooth with that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll take my um, draw size down and I will again click around this lip just to give us that more geometry might even take it down a little bit more and you can see that we're, we're getting quite a bit of geometry here and now uh, the way that the smooth takes um, effect is that it smooths based on the polygons around it so if you've got a lot more polygons around it uh, doesn't have to go as far to find something to smooth against which means that you can sort of smooth without losing quite so much of that uh, that volume or that detail. Um, but it you know it can work against you. So just sort of just 
be aware of uh, what you want to achieve and how it achieves that. You can see that we're getting a, a much better sort of result there. Um, a lot less sort of cancerous um, look as uh, what we had before. Now you can see that it, it sort of juts out quite a bit in the middle there, uh, which looks good in profile, but from this side it's it's not that great. So I'm just going to uh, bring up this, this lip like that. And I'll bring up the sides here as well. And again, smooth. And what I might do is, with the inflate brush, just come along the underside here, just to give it more of a sort of, uh, I think the, the term is pendulous look, like a pendulous bottom lip. So there we go, we've got, uh, we've got a lip um, there. And if you uh, want, you, you and you should always sort of uh, do this, go backwards and forwards between wireframe and, and not, just to see how it looks without that, um, that sort of uh, wireframe shading on there. Uh, speaking of shading, if you want to work in a different material, um, it's uh, very easy. You can sort of have all sorts of uh, looks to your um, uh, to your model, and each one will sort of give you uh, different uh, modeling um, advantages. Um, I find that if you pick something that is close to what you are going to uh, eventually sort of um, render your model in, um, you get a better result. That's looking a bit sort of like you've got a cold sore. Um, so yeah, just just remember that and just sort of um, just try to pick something that's close to what you are eventually going to uh, be picking as your model sort of uh, final material. And, uh, and your result will be much better. Uh, so I'm just going to... Um, ah, well, there you go, serendipity. Um, I actually thought I was using the grab brush, uh, but I used the inflate brush, but I, I kind of like that shape, so I'm just going to keep that, that sort of shape there. I might sort of smooth it out a little bit, and I'm just going to pinch in at the sides there. You can see that this nose is uh, quite a bit bigger than it needs to be. But that's all right. We can we can come in here and we can um, uh, we'll be developing this anyway. So don't be too alarmed by it being sort of too oversized. The trick with sculptress, and I suppose this the, this also applies to things like um, ZBrush, uh, is to be bold with your movements. Just sort of um, uh, do things that might sort of you might be nervous about that you'd be like oh that's too much oh I'll never sort of fix that up um, yes you will you'll be able to uh, come in here and go no I don't like that and then sort of uh, come in and uh, and just completely change it for for something that you like better so um, just be bold just um, don't panic too much about uh, getting the perfect shape because uh, perfection is something that you work at with these programs. You sculpt it out. You don't sort of, you don't immediately go in there and, and create perfection right off the bat. Uh, as you can see from this head, I, I sort of started out with very rough strokes. Um, so you can see that we're getting uh, some quite good shapes in here. I'm just going to bring that in a little bit and then back out. Uh, and so, um, yeah, you just sort of just have to play around uh, and uh, like that, but bring in this side here. And yeah, I'm just bringing out the suggestion of this eye here. So at this initial stage, I like to sort of, I like to come up with a model that it looks like it has its eyes closed. Um, and then sculpt eyes out of that. So you can see this, this is our starting point for our head uh, and in the next lesson we'll be continuing on with this uh, and uh, just sort of getting some finer detail in there. So uh, I hope you can join me for that lesson.